Greetings, ladies and mental gents. <coughs> Hello? Hello. Ah, <laughs> that's better. I had a little squirrel stuck in my throat. Greetings, ladies and mental gents, again. And welcome to the Stales from Outer Space. space. Where I take space-related stories from around the internet and read it out loud for your entertainment. All the relevant links are down below. And don't forget to do the usual YouTube gumph. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I'd just quickly like to thank my Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Boomer, and Cat Crab Lobster. Again, thank you very much. Story number one. Humans are the masters of one thing. Written by Dragonson04. Humans, that curious race of people from a death world. A galaxy at large had been observing them for centuries before first contact was made, as they seemed to be an incomprehensible paradox. Everything they did, they didn't do. Everything they loved, they despised. Everything they fought for, they fought against. And so on. One of the few constants throughout their history was their various art forms. Painting is amongst their oldest art, with naturally sourced dyes on the walls of caves, showing basic pictures of daily life. The primitive ancestors of humans told their stories. They still used physical mediums to make their paintings, even after joining the larger galactic community. Sculpture was likely the next to evolve, as they developed tools that could cut and carve stone. Now, this is nothing new. Most sapien races followed a similar path when it came to the evolution of art. But most found their strength and stuck with it thousands of years ago to the exclusion of all other forms of art. You'd never see a sculpture by any avian race. You'd never hear a poem by a reptilian or amphibian race, for example. For the humans, though, they appreciate all forms of art and still make all forms of art. Their classical age of sculpture, for example, was a point of contention amongst the galaxy, as much of it showed totally nude humans, quite scandalous to the rest of us. But to humans... Their own bodies are still a fascinating and beautiful thing. I personally feel that sort of innocence is sorely missed in the galaxy. Form and proportion seem to be the key points in those works of stone. But I digress. While humans have all forms of art, the one they are masters of is the one I've yet to mention. Music. From the most primitive rhythms stomped out with feet or clapped out with hands, Drummed on hollow and dried plants, with hands or smaller pieces of the same plants. Or on stretched and tanned animal hides stretched over similarly dead plants, in various shapes and forms. Their oldest form of music might well be their own voices. Singing praises to whatever they worshipped. Singing of happiness. Singing of sadness. Singing because they have nothing better to do around the communal fire after a hunt. Music is a part of being human. My people, the Yeshua, being telepathic and empathic, can feel the effects of any form of art on the emotional level on any sapient race. I had the opportunity to travel to the human homeworld and experience the emotions of their music brought out in themselves. I can honestly say, I will never be the same again. After signing all the paperwork, as the humans call it, and getting an appropriate virus suit from my species. I walked on Earth for the first time and immediately set out. My first experience with human music was a genre called metal. Although the beat of the music nearly destroyed my ordinary senses, the wave of, well, can't exactly call it anger, it was more of a sense of power mixed in with a solidarity and joy. It was truly overwhelming. I felt ready to start a war by myself after a single song. After I recovered from metal, I tried their jazz, and that nearly broke me. When the Jisho breaks, they are no longer capable of feeling anything other than the last emotion that broke them. The musician of this saxophone was practically bleeding remorse, regret, and loss into every note. Those were mirrored in every single member of the audience in the small room. Luckily, I managed to hold on to my sanity, but just barely. 
It took quite a long time in my isolation tank to recover from that one. But by far, my favorite human music was there, classical. Centuries old and still played regularly by live musicians on actual physical instruments. To say nothing of all the countless times all of it had been recorded. And uh, music finished as no music has ever finished. Displace one note and there would be diminishment. Displace one phrase and the structure would fall. To quote one of the forms of art talking about the genre of music. I agree with the quote. And in my opinion, the piece that embodies this the best is the 1919 Firebird Suite by Igor Stravinsky. I requested a smaller sample size for this one for fear of being overwhelmed again by even a small group, and a single human volunteered to sit and listen with me. Such a magnificent array of motions were brought out, everything from hope to uncertainty to power to hate to at loss to triumphant victory. I honestly didn't know there was an emotion until this, and others that I honestly can't put a name on. Humans have a reputation of being a jack of all trades type. They can do anything with acceptable results, and a few things with great outcomes. But when it comes to music, I personally recognize them as the only true masters in the galaxy. End of story. Story number two. High Maintenance, written by Rosie013. Investing in a human was the best decision my grandfather ever made. And just to really rub salt in the wound, he wasn't exactly known for his competent decision making. I looked up from my drink to my patron across from me at the table, determined to draw the story out as long as I could. They had been buying me drinks all day, waiting for me to talk about this particular subject my family's business, and the meteoric rise in the industry. More fool them, almost everything I knew had already been written down under a false identity on the infoweb, if he had ever bothered to look. But I wasn't going to turn down free drinks. The young face didn't yet know that I knew barely any more than he did. A keep-going hand signal appeared to dispel my drunken paws. My grandfather was an idiot of a very special kind. A lucky idiot. He was busy, as usual, turning our respected family plumbing maintenance business into a literal crap show. Bad contract deals, poor customer reviews, unpaid bills, even employee thefts, the full works. I'm sure we were only a few cycles short of being shut down for good. This is all before I joined the family business, of course. I was still the juvenile at the time. The patron opposite me poorly hid his impatience at my drunken retelling, signaling for more drinks to be brought over and gave the nicest, I agree, get on with it, smile. I returned the smile lopsided. I'd been boring them with other almost random topics for hours now. Then, one day, a greasy-faced human appeared, not at the office front, but just walked right into the storage bay out back and asked my grandfather for a job. Yeah, a human... Those ratty scavenger vermin that you can find on stations across the entire sector. Walked right up to the owner like it belonged there. At least, it wasn't begging for coin. Desperate for staff, my grandfather hired him on the spot, sent him out to his first task that day. With an all the lunch break conversation worth of training, didn't trust him enough to hand over the tools either. The human would run off with the customer's money, and we would have another angry complaint to deal with. But he didn't. The last sentence was a touch more slurred than I should have liked. I must be pissed. Another drink landed in front of me. Ah, why not? It turned out that this human was some sort of, uh, of, uh, crap magician. The stupid thing was never able to explain exactly how it fixed stuff, but it never failed to get the job done, no matter how impossible. Our business started to stabilize and eventually start to outcompete the competition. The human worked cheap so long as we kept well fed. I always remembered it covered in pimples and grime, with snack food of one brand or another half hanging out of its dopey face. How my parents let me get near such a disgusting thing as just a youngling, I'll never know. But anyway, my grandfather tried hiring other humans, but they always demanded too much money 
or couldn't handle the work. It was just this particularly grubby one that somehow didn't mind the bad reputation our family had and could work wonders with piping. With the walls spinning, I wasn't right. Uh, the patron was leaning in eagerly now. It was probably time to give him what he wanted. Years later, I had just taken our new strong business from a retiring father when the human approached me and just blurted out his thoughts, as was its way. It was quitting. I was going to lose everything. Maybe if I played the business right, I could keep it stable for a short while longer. The human then said he had a friend who might be able to take his place. He had already invited him by later that cycle. When I met this new human, all suddenly became clear. You see, father taught me, unlike us noble scent-based beings, humans are a visual species. You got to pay some attention to the gestures and colors when working with them. It was an ugly and skinnier than the older human, but they had one thing clearly in common. I leaned in towards my son, like I was sharing the biggest secret in the galaxy, not just a family business secret. Both humans had red eyes. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.